I'm Yi Dok Ki from Assam Medical Center, and uh, I'm on MR side in this Professor Zhang's intentional debate session. Among these various concerns and uh, arguments related with uh, acute stroke imaging and the intervention, choice of the right imaging modality used to be one of them. But as of now, this issue becomes less important because of accumulation of our knowledge on proper imaging technique and uh, interpretation of the findings whether the images were obtained either with the CT or ML. We used to be wondering between various uh, imaging schemes and in difficulty in finding a robust cut-off values on the infra core and penumbra ratio holes. But now we are quite sure on the interpretation of the findings in a pragmatic way even in the late window. There is no keen point to argue regarding this, the imaging. Are you disappointed with uh, this, since you were expecting a tough core with the professor? Sir? However, still I'm on MR side because I'm currently quite happy with it so far. Here, I would like to spend the following 20 minutes to tell you why I'm satisfied with MR, especially in the late window. Let's start with a case from AMC. Uh, a lady was presented with a left uh, side weakness. She showed a subtle weakness and uh, sensory change the previous day, but it was neglected. The next morning, she was admitted to emergency room since her symptom gradually aggravated. CT didn't show any abnormality. Subsequent ML images taken about 12 hours after her initial symptom onset showed multifocal DWI lesions scattered like this. Some of the lesions were accompanied by subtle flare signal changes already. Contrast in S, the MRA showed occlusion uh, of the right distal MCA. These findings were enough for us to make a decision even without perfusion maps. The information on DWI was enough for us to be sure on the indication of the procedure even in her late presentation. This is the DSA occlusion was uh, identified in the right MCA distal M1. Uh, you can see the leptom meningeal collateral developed uh, quite uh, well, but the feeling was quite delayed. The clot was retrieved. Good restoration of the anterior flow was seen. I think findings on DWI was enough in the go and the no-go decision in this particular case. Actually, we have been doing this kind of uh, practice even before the prevailing late window paradigm because we already believed that the numbers were just the numbers on the clock face. Then how about this situation? The reason is unclear, however, the lady was presented uh, to us quite late. Her initial stroke score was 14. The MR was obtained about 21 hours after her initial symptom onset. The infra core was quite sizable, but we could tell the presence of penumbral regions here. What bothered me in the decision making was this. The high signal involving the basal ganglia and uh, part of the corona radiata. I was quite sure in expecting hemorrhagic transformation after revascularization, particularly at this area. We were aware of a quite common hemorrhagic change even in the classic treatment time window. The clot was at the ICA bifurcation we decided to go and open the ICA despite of expecting hemorrhage complication because we thought salvage of the penumbra would help her if we could limit the hemorrhage locally. We proceed the procedure. Aspiration was done successfully. 
The follow-up MR finding was like this, with the limited hemorrhage and uh, some edema, but still limited. We believe that we could limit the hemorrhage complication since we already recognized the risk, which was uh, clearly visualized by the MR imaging. That was possible owing to the DWI findings, the dense lesion here. I know we can expect it even with the CT perfusion too. However, one cannot underestimate the value of vivid demonstration of the infarct core in detail on top of the infarct core volume information. Anyway, late window recanalization becomes a standard of care since 2018, as long as we are sticking on the conservative inclusion criteria of the two trials. Among the criteria, imaging findings are the most crucial part. As you well know, both trials didn't limit the imaging modality, neither solely on CT nor solely on MR, as far as the rapid software was used, in, especially in the diffuse suite. In Dawn trial, even did not require any penumbra or collateral information. The infarct core volume on DWI or CTP was enough. There was no discrimination on the imaging modality in those two trials. No reason to argue on choice of the imaging modality. Which one is better? That, I think, is not a relevant uh, question here. A recent paper from Switzerland says they could expand the indication by applying more liberal inclusion criteria, even with the city-based practice. Among the patients with a confirmed large artery occlusion, they could include a much higher number of patients by applying more liberal imaging criteria, still enjoying the clinical benefit of a mechanical thrombectomy. In this trend, several months ago, we, the members of the Stroke Center at AMC, discussed on the need of shifting our current ML-based protocol to a city-based protocol. However, majority of us did not have any need of shifting since we did not experience any trouble or any significant difficulty with our current protocol. So we concluded our discussion at the time by agreeing on the need of adopting a city-based protocol only for the situation when the MR machine was not available, which occur quite rarely though. The bottom line of my stance is that city or MR, that is not a big issue as long as the runners are doing their best like this. Different from the hyperacute stroke in the conventional time window, which is this window, in the late window, it is easy to exclude rapid progressors like this, rapid progressors here, and we can focus on identification of the slow progressors like this case or like this case in this category. And furthermore, there is less need of super hurry in the late window compared to the hyperacute state in imaging and the disease making, even though we still have cases in this category. But still, the slope is less steep than the rapid progressors. I think the fundamental role of imaging in the late window could be Diagnosis of acute ischemic stroke, identification of occlusion, etiologic diagnosis, and exclusion of large infarct core and or absence of a salvageable tissue. For this, I think both multimodal MR and CT can meet the needs. No point to argue. However, I believe MR could be better with these advantages. Number one, clear visualization of the infarct core, which I think is the most important virtue, even though perfusion CT with the T-max maps can serve adequate information. It could not match the vivid visualization of the lesion on DWI. I think this is more important in case of wake-up stroke or 
and witness the stroke. See the significant proportion of the patient were in this category. In that sense, I think MR is better than CT. Furthermore, with MR imaging, we can save iodine contrast media to reserve for the thrombectomy procedure. One more thing we have to admit is that the outstanding role of MR in diagnosis of posterior circulation infarction. By applying contrast media, both CT and MR can generate wonderful head and neck angiographies. However, it is challenging with CTA to have good bone and soft tissue subtraction like this. Considering the importance of good vascular information, I think contrast in STMO can serve us much better imaging for this role. Of course, MR cannot be completely free from disadvantages. We should consider uh, the cost if there is no insurance coverage, although it is not an issue in Korea as of now. Limited accessibility could be a problem in many hospitals, not only to the limitation of the resource, but also due to the physical distance between the emergency room and the exam room. The situation might be different from different hospital to hospital. And the longer scan time, at AMC, we adopted the six minute protocol and we were satisfied with this. In this sense, scan time may not be a big issue as long as the access to the ML machine is good. This is the current fast MR protocol at AMC. It is consisted of DWI, fast flare, fast GRE, a PWI, and fast contrast in MRA. And it's less than six minutes. I have to admit that in some of the patients with the equivocal clinical situation, we tend to obtain non-fast previous MR protocol to minimize any decision difficulty due to the inevitable low resolution issue with the FAST protocol. Longer recon time, however, I don't think the time required for the image reconstruction by experienced radiology techs is hampering our clinical decision. The last disadvantage I put here is the long-lasting confusion from the concept of diffusion-perfusion mismatch. It used to be a problem and, uh, of course, a headache to us. Nobody will deny the role of this straightforward and intuitive concept in opening a new avenue of acute stroke imaging. However, contrary to our expectation, we had suffered from a long time difficulty in the quantification of the perfusion abnormality. As of now, I would say that there would be a little argue on the number of perfusion threshold on this simplified table. Currently, we regard Tmax as the most robust and reproducible perfusion parameter being the Tmax 6 for the penumbra, 10 for the core thresholds. Then, was the lack of this parameter the cause of the failure of the trials such as MR rescue? I don't think so. The concept was right. But it was difficult to prove because of lack of an effective recanalization method, which we did not have at that time. The problem was not in the wrong imaging protocol, but in the ineffective recanalization method. So with this, I'd like to ask you to put the original diffusion perfusion mismatch concept on the high pedestal as the right method visualizing the target of our revascularization therapy. Therefore, with these advantages and some disadvantages which I have easily defended, we can conclude that the multimodal MR imaging has more virtue over multimodal CT, especially in the late window situation. Logistic issue could be the only limiting factor. Thank you for your attention.